Hi, my name is Chris Daly and this is a tutorial on cylindrical mapping. In this tutorial I'm going to put treads on the tires of this school bus. To start off I am going to hide everything but the tires. Now the first attempt I made at this was to drag an image on top of the tires. I have an image by a guy named Matt Welch. I will show you the URL in the posting for this. I'm sorry, it's Michael Welch. And it didn't turn out all that well. So I will show you what I mean by that. Not showing up so well. A quick render. How about just render this tire, this set of tires. As you can see, there was some success, but it wasn't completely successful. The orientation of the bitmap was one direction and then the other at different points around the tire, and this was not acceptable. So don't do that <laughs> for future reference. I'm not going to show you exactly how I did it, but uh, just trust me. So I'm going to get rid of that right now. Delete. Delete. Yes. So that's gone. So we need a better approach to doing this, and we need to map it cylindrically onto the tires. Okay, that's easier said than done. Cylindrical mapping usually works on the y-axis, and I don't want to mess with my model directly in order to get all of these tires facing up and down. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a new pose on off. So this is a relationship and right now we're looking at just the tires. So within this relationship I'm going to move the tires so that they're at the center of the universe of this model of this relationship universe and that they are facing upwards. Okay you'll see what I mean as we go about doing this. I'm going to look at this from the top and so these are my my tires. I am first going to get them all lined up on the z-axis. So move them left and right on the x-axis to get them on the z-axis from the top. And then I'm going to move them in the z-axis to get them to get them all lined up on the x-axis line. And then I'll move to the sign, side and update their y values. So we'll do that first here. I'll first highlight all of this. I'm going to turn on the show manipulator properties up here. Okay, at this moment I can see up on the right hand side here that my x coordinate is 2.85. So I'm going to say for the offset here minus 2.85 and that will move it to where I want it. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and move it on the z coordinate, z or z coordinate. It says 15.48 here, so I will go minus 15.48 here, and there we are on the axis. So I'm going to repeat this. So that's minus 2.85 on the upper right here. So I'll move that 2.85 to the right to get it to zero. And then 15.48 here, I will do minus 15.48, and there we go. For these others, I'm going to need to do a little bit of zooming so I can get to the right, get the right part selected. Okay. And now I can say minus in the x-axis, it's minus 3.39. In the y-axis, it'll be plus 7.31, or z-axis rather. to go here. Oops. Okay, 2.05. 7.31. 
Okay, so now from the top view, they are all where I want them. Now I'll move to the side view, and here we can see it's still a little bit off the ground. So I will make sure I've got all of these highlighted. And the y-axis I'll move down by 1.75, minus 1.75, and there we go. Now there's one more transformation I'm going to have to do. This is the front view. I'm going to rotate this. And on the z-axis, or z-axis, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. There we go. Now that's most of the setup. There's one other thing I'm going to do. I only want the tire treads on the, the portion of the tire that will be hitting the ground. So I'm going to hide everything else now. Okay, this is the top view. And I'm just going to select all of the points, control points, that are not going to be the ones that will be touching the ground. Okay, and then I will hit the period key to get everything other than those points I've selected. So those are the ones I want. And then I'm going to hit the H key twice to hide, unhide everything and then hide everything but these tire tread uh, splines once, twice. So now we have all of my tires all together. I'm going to look at the front view here with the two key, numeric two key. Okay, we are just about ready to create our decal. Now, just a reminder, we're in our relationship here. So I'm going to move up here, go to decals. And here, while still in the relationship, I'm going to say new decal other and I'm going to choose this horizontal thread. This horizontal thread will match the orientation of the of the tires as they're laying down right now. So you can't quite see all of that but there you go. So I'm going to say okay and whoa that's huge. So the first thing we do is we size this. I'm going to Get it approximate there and then zoom in again. Okay. I think the width is, or what looks like the height here, is the most important thing. And I've just been, in my tests, I've been making the, the width be the length of one patch. But overall, so that's placed pretty well. And again, we're on the relationship, not on the model. And I'm going to say apply. Oops, before I say apply, there's something I need to fix here. I need to change the mapping to be cylindrical. So here we go with cylindrical. So that's a very important step I almost forgot. It's easy to do. It's easy enough to undo if you mess it up. But uh, OK, so now I'm going to say apply. And there we have it applied. I am going to switch windows to the school bus itself and do a quick render and see what it looks like. Okay, so there's a little bit of a problem here. It's not repeating as often as it should. I'm going to put the auto magic re-render on with shift Q. And right here on the image, there is a repeat property. And uh, in the Y direction, I'm going to try out some high number 80. Well, that's not right. About the X axis. There we go. That's looking relatively decent. Um, maybe 70 to get a little bit better. OK, so that looks OK, I think. That's a success. No, notice that this is a color, not a a bump map, which is what I'm going to change it to shortly. I left it on color intentionally so I could more easily see what it looked like. Okay, uh, one thing I'm just going to show you briefly is if what happens if you turn Seamless on. 
it still looks mostly okay except you notice in some places here it kind of reverses and looks incorrect. I think that is because it will display the bitmap in one direction and then to to try to make it seamless it will mirror the bitmap and place it around the other way and so on all the way around. So um, in this case the bitmap that we have is seamless on its own so we don't need to turn this on to try to make it force it to be seamless. So that looks pretty good. The last thing I'm going to do here is turn this to a bump map and it's a little hard to see at this at this size so I'll zoom in again and do a quick render and this is on the model not on the relationship Oops. and ran out of time there so as you can see that is quite a nice result so I will unhide everything and I think we are ready. We are done. So the other thing is I no longer need this relationship. So I am going to go ahead and find the relationship, pose one relationship and delete it. Modified, yes, I don't care. And I probably should have just gone actually to the to the property and deleted it out of there first. Oh, I did. Okay. So there we have it. We've cylindrically mapped our tires. And they look, if you ask me, darn good. There you have it. I hope this was helpful.